In this video I'll be doing a review of Crunchbang 11. So this is the January 2013 release, which is just kind of an update to the ISO, a bit of a freshen up on the repositories and a couple of changes here and there on the programs. So it's based on Debian 7 and it uses the Openbox desktop. Now this is kind of like a blank canvas, which makes it a very difficult distro to review. Not because it's difficult to use, but because it's almost like being asked to review a work of art which is only half complete. Well, I don't know what it's going to look like at the end, well only you will know. So you make it what you want it to be. But they do leave you in a position that is ready to use out of the box. As you can see the desktop is very plain. All you have is a switcher between the two different desktops and you have a conky script running in the corner. Now that's displaying uh, memory and disk usage and also gives you some handy shortcut keys. Memory is fairly low on here, 150 meg at idle, and kind of seen it shoot up to about 190 at idle as well. You right click the mouse to bring up the program list. And you've got a run program option here. You can start typing what you want, then press tab to auto complete. So that's a useful feature. I think we might as well just go and look through the list of programs because there's really nothing else special that I can mention. So you've got a terminal, you've got Ice Weasel web browser, which opens up a custom version of the Google homepage. So you've got links to the Crunchbang community. You can search on Google. Flash is installed on here, so if I went to my channel, and just open up one of my videos, you can see it plays straight away. Now it's very useful to have a Debian based distro that can play Flash Player and Codex out of the box. So you've got Funar File Manager, a Genie Text Editor, VLC Media Player. That icon there on Taskbar is like a roll up. However, I'm not sure what that one is. I've been puzzling around it, just cannot work it out. I'm sure someone will know. Under Accessories, got a Catfish File Searcher, Archive Manager, Genie Text Editor as we've seen, Task Manager, HTOP, and you can see the memory yeah, pretty much corresponds to the Conkey script. A Terminator Terminal, Funar and Funar File Manager. Under Graphics, got GIMP pre-installed, that's GIMP 2.8. Or did it come pre-installed? Now I've just forgotten because they had this little startup script and I can't remember if I chose it there. So there's this startup script that just ran the first in the first reboot. And it went through an update of a load of programs and gave you the option to install a few things. Now, there's one mistake there that GNOME M player is actually VLC media player. Also under multimedia we've got volume control and XF burn. Under network under network and the browsers, you've got Ice Weasel pre installed. We've got the option to install Chromium, Chrome, or Opera. We've got GFTP pre installed. Transmission for downloading torrent files, Xchat IRC. Remote file systems, remote desktops. Uh, viewer, or just a basic text server. And SSH, you've just got the option of editing the config file. And lastly, under Network, you've got Services, and that's just the option to install Dropbox. Now, under Office, I installed LibreOffice through the startup script. Uh, Google Docs, Abbey Word, and GNumeric came pre installed. Also, got Calculator and Events PDF Viewer. Places is just a list of shortcuts that will open up in Funar. Got some recent files. Uh, settings, just got various settings on here. You can do a lot of editing and customization on Openbox. You can go and put shortcuts on the desktop, but you have to read up on that. System, you've got the option to install printer support. You've got GParted, Synaptic, pre-installed, and use login settings. Ah yes, there's the option to auto login. Funny enough, I was searching around for that earlier. I didn't see that option there. No, so I can now auto login. And that's it. Here's what I thought of Crunchbang 11. So easy to use. Well, not brilliantly. You're going to have to look at the manual to get the best out of the system, but it is at least usable out the box. So ease of installation. It's a GUI-based installer, but it does ask a few technical questions. 
So Starling, I did want to award it more points for this because they had to put a, quite a few custom graphics in there, but it is only basic, so hence only three out of five for that. Boot up speed, uh, only got an average of about 12 seconds in VirtualBox on my system, so that means a real, real system install is going to be around 16 seconds on my system. Not brilliant. Responsiveness, uh, it's about average for Linux distro there. Number of bugs, there was one crash during testing. Uh, I was messing around with a load of applications open and switching between them, but I was unable to replicate it. It was just a one-off crash there, so I'm not sure. Selection of pre-installed applications, mm, they got it pretty well. A number of applications available, well they've enabled the non-free repository within Debian, so that opens up a lot of applications that you can install, but there's no pay for applications there, so I can't give it full marks. Uh, yes, it comes with both 32 and 64-bit versions. So the good points, it's a blank canvas that's usable, but it can also be customised how you want it. And the first time run script updates the system and gives the option to install some application, so that's quite a useful feature. Mind you, you might want to know what you want and what you want to install and what you don't want to install. But as I found, a lot of those install options are available later on during the menus. Bad points. It's not really a distro I could recommend to a first-time Linux user. It could, but I think there are probably other distros that are like Lubuntu, which are probably just as lightweight, that are easier to use. And I just got the feeling that it could be faster and lighter than it is. I know it's a lightweight Debian-based distro using OpenBox, but it just didn't feel that snappy. That's just my opinion there. Anyway, overall, I've given this distro 70%. Thanks for watching. See you later.